well, well, well. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Waking up for a nice early Saturday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. As always, want to be wishing you well. As always, we got some new to talk about. Well, not as always as a couple weeks ago. That was pretty, <laughs> pretty boring range. However, now we actually do have a few things to discuss. So let's waste no more time and get in the live scene over here. As I do want to be respectful of your time. And as always, be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest Saturday mornings or whatever time it is in your part of the world. Let's get over here to the live scene. Okay, so Bitcoin is still grinding this Cyan 89 exponential moving average right here. And yes, if you do want to make this easy for yourself if you're a little bit more of a higher time frame trader i mean I, I wouldn't necessarily consider a daily like a super high time frame but i would say hey as long as bitcoin's respecting this area as resistance that is the play to make however if bitcoin actually takes this area out then very likely going to have a run probably into i'd say about 41 4200 somewhere right around here would look about right this whole area is going to be a thickness of resistance so that does make it difficult but overall that's what i'd be looking for we are going to be in danger or perhaps not danger depending upon your disposition of getting a pretty powerful Powerful exponential moving average cross relatively soon on the daily build time frame. That'll come uh, assuming price action remains here or higher for the next, I'd say, about four days. Uh, you will get that cross, and that could be the impetus for a nice move. We actually haven't had this green, or sorry, this yellow 21 and this green 55 exponential moving average cross uh, to the upside for quite some time. I think the last time was over here, actually. And funnily enough, you will notice that each and every time that this actually does cross the upside for the past year, ever since Bitcoin had its parabolic blow off top, it actually did call a little bit more of an uptrend move, but that got sold into as kind of like the more aggressive part of the bull trap, I suppose you could say. So you have the cross right, sorry, right here. You get it for one day and then boom, down. You get it right here. You get another, you know, another pump up and then get sold into once you break the 21. Once again, you know, it's, it's, it's bare. It's, it's, it's a red dildo party time back. Once again, you have the, uh, you have the same cross right over here. What happens after that? You know, you get another run up almost 10,000. Nope. Reject. Get the fuck down. And then we have one. Do we have one over here? No, we actually don't. Yeah, then the last time we actually had the 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 downwards cross in this was right over here, you know. So again, that one actually that one actually uh, got you all the way from thirteen thousand to uh, to eighty six hundred. Not bad. So again, with this hinting at across the upside, it's not necessarily saying that you know bull market on or anything like that. I need to see much more from the macro perspective to actually change my views on that, and we can go through that a little bit later in this video. But I do want to announce that yes, that is getting pretty damn close, and barring any sort of bear you know bear attack. Uh, that brings us down below about 3,700. You will it, that that cross will happen. It is inevitable, um, as long especially you know the quicker that or sorry the more that that price action stays here, the faster it will happen. You know maybe in the, maybe even three days if that if that were the case. Anyways, uh, lower time frames is where all the action is going on around right now. As we are creating what looks to be an ascending triangle. Now you can see the way that this is getting walked down right now. In fact, after the stream last night, we came back and retested this first trend line. This first support trend line that we actually broke through, uh, broke to the downside through a couple days ago, which I believe we saw, which we caught on live stream as well, which is really, really nice. It's cool when you actually get some action, but basically getting washed down within this range, although creating higher lows along the way. So technically speaking, it is a bullish consolidation pattern. More often than not, these are going to break up to the upside, statistically speaking. doesn't mean it's always going to. Of course, I've seen, you know, I've seen every pattern break out every goddamn which way that it's quote unquote not supposed to. So again, uh, you'd have support, more importantly, right around here, 3,900 and rising, and resistance right around here, right around about 3,950. And as long as we're closing hourly, two-hour dildos below that area, that could be a more preliminary way of doing things if you don't want to wait for the daily. Of course, it's not financial advisor, not financial advisor, but I would actually be making decisions based upon that. As if Bitcoin does break above 3950 and actually close like, you know, an hour, you know, at the very least an hourly, but preferably like a two hour or a three hour, four hour uh, a dildo above there, then yeah, I do start to look for a measure move on this baby to get hit. And I believe that would be pointing us, that would probably be pointing us well into the 4000s. Uh, let's just, let's check this guy out. Something like this would look about right. Let's pull him out. And that would be pointing us, yeah, right around here, around 4100, a few ticks below 4100, basically towards the, towards our last lower high right here. Now, of course, this comes with a lot of caveats, right? Because while I am looking at something like this, uh, when I do put on the volume profile, we can very easily see that, you know, there, there's some massive activity going around this region. So anywhere within this region really kind of makes sense between, again, this 4050 area, we could say, and this 4150 ish area. Again, I know it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of annoying, but when we're talking about wicks and we're talking about dildo bodies, those 
are that's kind of how I can relate those sorts of things. So you know, I'd be looking for a wick probably probably a little bit into the 4100 level if that were to happen, and probably dildo body to settle somewhere right around here. Um, now, with that said, we also do have some major, major, major resistance coming around that area as well. Something that I put a significant uh, amount of weight on and getting to more of the macro view right now, the purple 200 exponential would be coming in right around that 4100 range as well. So remember, I am I'm making assumptions here, but of course. If you want to make this easy for yourself, again, the trigger points are 3950, 3900. Anything else besides that is just my opinion and is like, it doesn't fucking matter. It does not fucking matter. I don't trade my opinion. I don't trade my opinion. But um, the 200 exponential moving average right over here coming in right around 4100 and that is very significant because as long as bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly dolds below that, I don't really have any reason to believe that the bearish market is over. However, it is getting pretty damn, it, you know, it, it is getting a little bit close, but look at the weekly volume so far. Again, when people are looking at this kind of dig, you know, looking at this as a signature of the bear market being over, I, I, I would really, I would really suggest to look at the higher time frames and reconsider that the volume on this is very lackluster. It is very anemic. It is very not imposing. It is not that girthy green dildo volume that I want to see to bring me out of my bearish market. What I want to see is I want to see something that is, you know, <laughs> that has severe conviction on it. This right here looks more like consolidation and when you actually simplify on a higher time frame like this you can see that the pink 200 simple moving average and the purple 200 exponential moving average have just been governing price action for the last three months nothing's really changed nothing's really changed so as long as bitcoin's above this pink 200 simple moving average uh by the same token i'm not really um it's not really appropriate to be too damn bearish although it is a bearish market we do have lower highs and lower lows so far um and if we do actually break that area then yes i start looking towards the mid 2000s which we can which we can get into later but more importantly to the upside the purple 200 exponential coming in right around 4100 same sort of deal with that i would drastically change my tune on the market if bitcoin both opened and closed a weekly deal above that purple 200 exponential moving average and let me just make sure that my mic is working over here i do apologize about the mic sound i do understand that it is uh, it is quite it or it is quiet uh, i'll be going to the store later today to hopefully fix that We'll see. Um, it's been quite a bitch, but uh, but 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 I'll keep my fingers crossed. So again, I do pause about that, and thank you for bearing with me. No pun intended. But overall, you know, this 200 exponential moving average. Understand that price action can wick above there and still not change anything from the macro view. In fact, we could get you know we could theoretically get a wick all the way up to the yellow 21 exponential. And, and in fact, there's actually a few things pointing towards that area, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but uh, but as long as we're closing below and, and opening and closing below on the uh, 200 exponential, well. No, I, I don't really have any macro reason to believe that the bearish market is over. And of course, there are, you know, there are three components to that factor. And that's one of the more powerful ones. The least powerful one, but also important, is making a higher high on the daily. If we could make a higher high on the daily, I would start to, you know, maybe change my tune around. That would be just getting above this guy right over here, which was around 40. 4050 wick all the way up to about 41 yeah 4112 basically right where the 200 exponential is on the weekly um but that's you know that that not that's not necessarily going to be the most you know convincing thing as far as i'm concerned uh what would be more convincing again it's the weekly and then obviously from the higher time frame perspective there's two big things the if we could bet if we could get like a daily total closing above the six thousand breakdown level that would be no questions asked bear our bull our bull market on essentially I wouldn't have any reason to be bearish off that. Let me just make sure if I can turn on my, huh? Yeah, I do have everything up as, as much as possible. Again, I, I do apologize about the sign, uh, sound, guys. I can see that it's not uh, hitting too high right now. Um, but, you know, the 6,000 level, very, 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 very important from that. If you're more technical or traditional technical analyst, you'll say that as long as you're below there, you're in the bearish market now. I would argue that you could probably figure it out beforehand before, you know, formally getting above there that the bearish market's over. Um, however, that would be the more traditional way of doing it. And then of course the monthly is going to come into play as we are going to be setting a monthly dolo in stone in the next, uh, what is it? Five days. Yeah. We're on the 23rd of February of 2019. Nicholas Martin's here. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Anyways, uh, this is very important to me because the monthly is my more traditional way of doing it where, you know, where, where I used to use a lot in traditional marks when I was a market maker authorized trader on the floor of New York Stock Exchange ARC is, and the way that I kind of judge if something is generally bullish, generally bearish is, is it above the monthly 21 or below the monthly 21? We well, can see that we are well below the monthly 21, which is coming in all the way at 53. 
three fifty four hundred ish area. Now keep in mind this green fifty five exponential will come into into play later on in this month because we will have a chance to both open and close our first monthly dota below it for the first time in Bitcoin's history ever. And if that were to happen, I would immediately start looking towards the cyan eighty nine exponential down here. Now not immediately. This is a monthly dollar, so it could still take you know a month or two. But you understand like in the relative price action, that's what I'm saying. Hopefully that's clear. Um, but hey, if we even do close above the green 55 exponential, it doesn't mean that the bearish market is over, but it would imply that we're going to have an extended an extended push to the upside, um, probably probably towards the higher 4000 levels. Uh, and this is just going to get drawn out even more. But with the way that we're kind of reacting along this area, while these two moving averages approach each other, that is not good. That suggests, and especially the way that, this, that these are set up right here, and let's actually go to Bitstamp so we can see volume. You can see the volume, uh, the volume signature on this is very that very much of consolidation on a higher on a higher level time frame. So while these two moving averages, uh, you know, uh, migrate towards each other, that would suggest that this is likely to be bearishly resolved as the as the algos will you know intensify their selling. That's not going to be good. Um, in other words, if you want to be more bullish, and like I said, I am a long term bull, but I mean, I, I shouldn't say that I'm a long-term bull. I'm a long-term believer in Bitcoin. I do believe that it has its place in the world. Um, but, 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 does that mean that, uh, does that mean that, that I'm just going to blindly buy at any point in the time? No, absolutely not. Because look at, you know, historically speaking, look at how, do you want to be a, do you want to be a buyer right here? Do you want to be a buyer right here? You know, it's, it's market cycles, right? Anyways, let's get on over here before I lose my uh, my train of thought. But uh, but overall, on our lower t on our lower dildo time frames, we actually are seeing our stokes turning around, and it does look like we want to test the bottom side of the range once again. Now, of course, if thirty nine hundred breaks by the other, you know, on you know by the other. On the other hand, whatever the fuck term I'm using, uh, I'm looking for. Sorry about that, guys. I am still just waking up, so perhaps perhaps need to turn the brain on a little bit. Um, but if this area breaks right here, yes, then I, then immediately I start looking towards low 3800. Um, this would not necessarily destroy the overall structure of this um, as a as as a consolidation. Uh, could very easily get reaccumulated right at uh, the 3800 level, and I would not be bearish if we did break 3900. I would be looking for a scalp short to the downside at 3800. Sorry, if we broke 3900. Uh, I would look for a scalp short to the downside around 3,800. Um, but I don't get like directional bearish looking, you know, es essentially, essentially declaring that this uh, that this rally has failed. Actually, you know, more traditionally speaking, until we get back below this area right here, 3,650, which is also the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement, which is also this nice horizontal trend line, which is where we broke out of to kind of lead up into this. So if we actually violated that, that it would imply a move back down to the downside of this uh, of this range, probably, you know, 3,400, it looks like, is, uh, is where that lies, or maybe even 3,350, something like that. Um, so again, as long as we're below there, or sorry, as long as we're above there more, uh, more, more accurately, um, that's kind of what I'd be thinking. As you can see, we've actually just hit the 236 Fibonacci retracement. So we are grinding up against a lot of resistance right now. And that does, you know, that does really offer up the potential for, for a nice pullback here, like an actual pullback. We haven't really seen a legitimate one just yet. I mean, we've seen, you know, we've seen the ups and downs. And I think that I really did a bad job of, of explaining that, or at least I think I did because last night, um, someone asked me on the live stream, why why were you why were you bearish uh over here and then bullish over here but again in like very very low time frames but understand i'm talking about very low time frames so when i was bearish over here i was looking for a move to the downside of this range when i was bullish over here i was looking for the for a move to the upside of this range anything anything outside of that i'm agnostic to i don't want to force my opinion on the fact um i'd say that there's probably more things aligning with a pullback to 3830 right now uh before trying higher but Hey, you know, as long as we are holding 3,900, this is by definition an ascending triangle. So, again, that's what I'd be saying right now. Uh, we do have our hourly stokes, you know, headed healthily down. I think four hour are still up, three hour are losing momentum, getting right at the bullish control zone. Uh, and then I think our, our, our medium to high are all down. Yeah, eight hours down, uh, six hour is down, 10 hour is down, 12 hour is not confirmed down, but wants to cross down. Daily's probably gonna still be up. And remember, sorry, about the daily, funnily enough, every time that Bitcoin's gotten in this range on the daily, 
uh, this it actually has called tops, but more of a clunky way of doing it. It hasn't. It doesn't like call it like at the fucking moment. It calls it. And it basically says be aware, which is a which is what I'm gonna you know start to gear into now. And essentially, for the overall picture, be aware that I do believe that a major top is coming relatively soon. Whether it's this area or a little bit above at 41, 4200, that's the real question. We'll talk about that in just a second. But basically, you know, this area was your July highs at 8,000. This was your September highs. This was your uh, this was your May highs and Bitcoin kind of get into this area once again and it actually has called these tops pretty fucking well and sorry this was your February double top of 2018 so again it's it's saying be on the you know it's it's on the radar and because we are grinding up against a lot of resistances right here as we spoke about you know the two three six Fibonacci retracement this cyan 89 exponential this ascending trend line sorry let's actually get rid of this this ascending trend line going all the way down uh, from our last couple highs and also this historic or not historical but this horizontal trend line going all the way back from late. November, there's a lot of things coming around this area that would suggest or, or would kind of offer up the, the likelihood for that. Uh, and of course, the RSI is actually giving us perhaps our first our first drive of bearish divergence right here, a very, 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 very slight one. I typically don't consider this sort of thing uh, bearish divergence, but when we but when we flatline and go down on the RSI while price action is essentially flat or making slightly, eh, what do you call that? I mean, as far as closures go, is it is, did it make a higher high? Yeah, it actually, no. Yeah, it did. As far as closures go, it did. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just suggesting that we, pr you know, it, it would, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really fuck anything up if it, if we, if we pop back down here and tested like the 3A2 or this horizontal, it, it's all the same shit to me. Um, as we get across like this, that would kind of make sense. So again, that's what I have my eyes on. The jewel also getting pretty damn up on the daily as well. In fact, each and every time that it's gotten up to this range, it has called tops. Again, September, uh, uh, September, October, or sorry, September, August, uh, May was the last time before that. And then the time before that, that we were even above this area was literally at 20,000 in December of 2017. So again, a lot of things coming around that range. And, uh, and now I'm going to get into why I don't believe that even if Bitcoin turns down from this area right here, it's probably not the local top that I'm looking for, although I am looking for a local top. But remember, if a local like a local top turning into an actual reversal, that's a different thing. And a reversal is confirmed below basically this area right here, 3650. Although you could make I would make a decision at 3720. So maybe maybe get, a, you know, 100 bucks uh, in earlier um, or at least have a position on as far as like an actual, you know, an actual directional trade if that were to happen. But because I'm going over here to the four hour delo time frame, we do have something very interesting to be aware of and something that I put a shit ton of weight on. We got the four hour delo golden cross, which yes, I've been talking about quite uh, quite a bit, but we have a lot of things actually to follow up on. And this golden cross has gotten us about 12% from bottom to top after the, sorry, and I, I should also uh, denote them. It's the green 55 and the purple 200 right here. Uh, so we've seen about 12% over the course of about six days now. Now let's go back in history and see what the last, you know, golden dildo crosses on Bitcoin have done. And you have this one right over here when this bull trap in August, August to September. Um, and this one was about, you know, five days as well and eight and a half percent. So significantly weaker than the one that we're looking at already right now. Um, this one over here in May, or sorry, was this name? No, this was this was uh, this was the August dump. Um, you know, 27% move from from bottom to top. Pretty damn good. Pretty powerful, and took about 14 days for the red dildo party to begin. Then we had the time before that, right over here in May of last year. And once we got uh, once we got that, it was about a another 25, 26% move to the upside, and took about 18, 19 days for the red dildo party to begin. Then the time before that, and I think the only time before that, before you know the the massive pump of uh, of 2017, was this area right here. Well, another about 13% gain in the in the course of five days. So you can get a relative gauge on what this produces from a historical sense. You know, somewhere between we could say 10 and 25% over the course of anywhere between, you know, on the low end, five days on the high end, a uh, couple weeks, you know, two and a half weeks, we could say. So again, judging the relative strength of this guy, we can say that it is actually kind of likely that we do get another overall run higher. And I would be looking for that to be a massive sell. 
that's kind of my opinion right now. I do think that it's very possible in the you know in the more immediate time frames that we pop back down, test low 3800, get picked up right there, and then probably work our way higher, probably march higher around you know f like 40, 50, 4100, 4150, whatever whatever it ends up being, and then that's going to be a massive sell. That's kind of my opinion right now. If I want to be very direct, speaking to that. But I do want to also go over a few other things that say, you know, that that kind of align with that fact. So let me actually explain that now. What do I think that we'll go in over here to the six hour dildo time frame. You'll notice that the six hour dildo golden cross is much more clunky. And with that, it's actually quite useful because it tells us when that last sort of drive that we're looking at that, uh, that we're looking for typically happens. And we have the six hour dildo golden cross right here. Um, we just got it uh, off, you know, on, during this consolidation, but price action is very far away from it. Look at the last time that you got the six hour, uh, the six hour dildo golden cross. Yes, price action did march a little bit higher, but that was like the very last of the Mohicans of that rally. Same thing over here. We have the six hour dildo golden cross right over here. You get another rally off of this consolidation, a very similar consolidation, by the way. Um, and that gets sold into, but it's telling you, you know, that next one is likely it. What do you have over here? You know, compared with the four hour doodle golden cross, which happened way over here. I mean, this one's happening all the way over here. You get another drive after that, you know, after that low gets picked up and then that one gets sold into. And then the time before that was, did we have a time before that? Yeah, we had a time before that literally right, um, yeah, right here. And that was like the very end of it. So a little bit, a little bit more clunky. Uh, but hey, you know, that's it's, it, it has a good history. What also has a good history and what I also want to show is a 12 hour 200 simple moving average, which we actually cleared. That is the two that is the pinkish moving average here, which we are actually well above right now. It's coming in all the way at 3780 and believe in this. This is going somewhere. So so just hold on uh, the 200 simple moving average. Every time that Bitcoin's gotten above it, uh, that calls kind of like the last of the Mohicans of that drive right here, right here and right here. And then before that, it, it was living below it. Um, so again, that to me makes a lot of sense because it says be aware that while it does look like there could very easily be another pump, that's probably going to be the sell. And to make an even more dedicated, a dedicated statement on that, we could say that as you know, if if and when I see Bitcoin go back below that 200 simple, that's actually when the red dildo party is much more of a confirmed type thing. Now, obviously, there's a lot of dumping beforehand, but a good trade is to be made either way. Uh, going over here to the two day dildo time frame, two day dildo time frame, we have the same thing based or sorry, the three day dildo time frame. We have the same thing with the 21 exponential, this yellow, this yellow moving average right here, which we are, which we just cleared for the first time in a long time on Bitcoin. Um, but look at the last times that we've actually cleared it in the last year. We cleared it over here and it maintains above there for about, I don't know, a couple weeks and red dildo party. And the time before that, we cleared it over here, stayed above it for a couple weeks and red dildo party. And the time before that, we cleared it over here, stayed above there for, I don't know, a couple weeks and red dildo party. And so you, and, and then the time before that, I actually caught the double top right here, boom, boom, and then down. So again, it's it's saying like I could also make a great decision based off that if we broke this level confirm below it that would likely be a good setup not only that but going over here to the three day RSI if Bitcoin does put in a lower high here and this will be considered a lower high as long as we are below this 4100 ish level which remember all the resistance is coming in around there then this will be considered hidden bearish divergence and like and just be another you know it's it's gonna it's gonna hit up all the divergence spots to start you know selling as well start their sell programs we also have uh funnily enough on the jewel the jewel is kind of getting to this area where it's been finding resistance recently although could get um i know i i take that back i don't i don't i don't put as much weight on that uh three day uh stokes are getting right right back up to the neutral zone, which has been the impetus for resistance on the last couple drives in this area, governing our lower high, or yeah, our pair of lower highs, and that's just bringing me up to, again, bringing me on to the onto the idea that hey, if we actually break that area, it's going to likely come in confluence with the 200 simple, likely kind of come in confluence with perhaps even a death cross on one of the lower time frames that we looked at, and that should likely be an, the next big trade if i'm looking for a more a more mature trade which i could you know actually maybe even get a, a major direction off of now of course again as stated before as long as bitcoin is above the 200 weekly simple moving average as opposed to the exponential don't want to get too damn bearish although the second that it breaks it which is again around 3350 right now then i start looking towards our next big targets 
uh, or at least my next big targets down here around the mid 2000 range around this in this blue box territory between 2300 and 2600 which is actually where the 886 Fibonacci retracement is which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 also some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming from right over here and if also if we put on the volume profile we have some major volume nodes being done around this area and if you do remember the monthly uh, the monthly also is pointing down around there as well, the 89 exponential as well as the weekly 377. So there are a lot of things coming around this area and that does put a lot of weight on it. But remember, the 200 symbol needs to break this guy right here, just like the 200 exponential needs to break to the upside. If you want to be a little bit more media, uh, intermediate term bullish, you need to see this guy break to the downside if I want to be... If I want to be like directional bearish, because uh, this is just consolidation as far as I'm concerned. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, what we're looking at right now is very corrective in nature. I mean, look at this, the volume signature corrective. It is, in, it is in that nice orderly drop off in volume that we kind of see throughout this whole segment. I mean, in fact, you see the same sort of consolidation here as you're seeing here. Bitcoin was making higher lows here, which everyone was going crazy about. It was also making lower highs and it had been making lower highs for much longer than it had been making higher lows. And of course, without even making higher highs, hard to be fucking bullish, but hey, that's cryptocurrency land. So again, when I look at something like this and I look at the volume signature, I look at the volume signature of this guy right over here, the structure, very, very similar, very, very corrective. And that to me is likely to have the same sort of result. However, understand that because this is kind of wedging itself into its own formation, we're going to get some sort of a triangle, it looks like. And that can have an apex. I mean, at current stance, if we do reject from here, which again, I... I you know, I kind of struggle with, you technically have an apex uh, in May. You technically have an apex in May. Now, of course, if, if it moves higher, we're gonna have to redraw this and the apex is gonna be probably even further away. But I do want to get that out there because it, you know, that that is historically how Bitcoin kind of plays out. It's, uh, it's longer consolidations. And remember, market cycles are not identical, but they do have brotherly characteristics because, well, we're, we're dealing with humans, so. At the end of the day, we have a lot of, uh, we have the same emotional conditioning, which creates these sort of same patterns, which, you know, we, we can't, we haven't been able to get away from this shit for the last hundred thousand, hundreds of thousands of years, ever since we became anatomically modern homo sapiens. So that's why it's one of those things that's a little bit more, you know, you can, you can, I, I put a lot more weight on human psychology than anything else. I don't read any trading books. I read human psychology books. Uh, let's go look at the underlying market dynamics. We have longs and shorts. We have longs a little bit below 25,000, paying a rate of 0.018. We have shorts below 20,000, paying literally nothing. Again, this is unheard of for the last, I mean, it's not unheard of anymore. This has been going on for like fucking five weeks now, six weeks. Uh, more importantly, if we go over here to the longs, we are, longs just left the fucking building. We have lost literally about 13,000 longs in the last uh, week or so, which is concerning as well. Longs are distributing at a major resistance, which you would expect during a bearish market. People aren't going to, you know, they're, they're not going to have the conviction to hodl. So people are getting out of their positions while Bitcoin is essentially in an uptrend on a, on a low on low time frames. That shows the overall feeling of the big market movers. Not only that, but couple that with the fact that shorts are below this 20,000 area in this red box territory, which historically speaking has lined up with all of the major dumps of the last year. But as you can see over here, even on this May, or sorry, even on this August dump, we spent a lot of time below this 20,000 area actually. So this was, you know, this was your March high right here um, at 12,000. This was your May high here at 10,000. This was your July high here at 8,000. This was your November high, technically high here at 6,300 before, like literally the day before breaking down to 3,000. I mean, not, you know, it wasn't done in a day, right? Um, and then once again, we're in this area. But as you can see, we can find comfort in this area for a little bit of time. It's just, it's it's on the radar. So that's the big message that I want to have. It's on the radar. Whether the big turnaround point is here or a little bit higher, that is the next big question. But uh, <laughs> it's like, to be or not to be short, that is the question. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm cool with trying out a trade here. I'm not, I'm actually not in a trade right now. I'm completely flat, but I'd, I'd be looking for another, another move back up to the top of the range to test it. Um, so I can get into a better position so I can manage risk a lot easier if I do decide to enter just because technically it is a bullish pattern right now. So <laughs> it's, it's more likely to break out to the upside than, than to the downside. Um, but what I would say is that if I am going to take a position, I want to know, I want to risk as little as possible in order, in order to know if that trade is going to work out or not. So the higher that I get, then the, clo then, uh, the, uh, then the less that I'll have to risk. And if that doesn't work out, then I look a little bit higher. 
So yeah, um, okay, cool. We talked about Bitcoin. Let's go look at GBTC. Where did GBTC end of the week? GBTC end of the week on a massive, massive long-legged doji dildo. Now, I haven't looked at this today, and obviously I was asleep before the actual close happened, and so I wasn't able to see this, but we were monitoring this yesterday during the live stream, and very important, it did make a higher high yesterday, but got sold into and looks, I mean, like this, this kind of looks like it's doing its own kind of bullish consolidation pattern on the lower time frames as well. I mean, look at the volume catchers, look at the, Look at the uh, shape of it, but on the daily, it looks like a massive long-legged doji. Now, what now? What time frame do I put more weight on? Daily, of course, always. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put more weight on the daily. Uh, daily Stokes getting up there, not necessarily tired just yet. Twelve-hour Stokes are gonna be the same thing. What about four-hour? Four-hour getting pretty tired, but still up there, still not crossed down. We do have bearish divergence on the RSI. But it keeps on, you know, I mean, we actually did, oh, wow, we actually did formally test this area right here at $5. Well, I, I guess one cent below $5, $4.99. Uh, but basically this this uh, this prior swing high right here. But remember, if that is to happen, where would that put spot charts? Basically around that 40, 50 to 4,100 range that we just spoke about right below the weekly 200 exponential. So a lot of things lining up in that area. That's where I do start to get a little bit more interested in a trade because GBC has been leading spot prices for the last you know, for the last year, it's been a pretty damn indicator, a pretty damn good indicator. Uh, I would still be, you know, I'd still be putting some weight on it. You can even see the jewel getting right into the same area actually as the last, uh, as the, as that last swing high right here. So I do put a lot of weight on that. Um, obviously if we do take out the high of this at basically $5, then ain't nothing stopping you from 529. That's going to put spot charts at 44, 4,500, which actually is a way forward for that as well. Um, going off of uh, this chart right here if I uh, I think I've saved it yeah you know remember remember we were looking at this this triangle right here it actually broke it to the upside rather than the downside but the measure move to the upside is pointing you where about 4400 4450 something like that so there, there is a way forwards there I think it's less likely I'm not really looking for that but hey I do have to talk about everything because well because well it's important um, by the way, CME futures closed Friday at 39.35, and this is also why I'm not really in any sort of a rush to get into a to get into a trade because likely we're gonna come back and fill the gap. Whether what what happens on Sunday is very important. That's probably the next trade to make, as far as I'm concerned. If if spot charts are above CMEs when they open, I'll probably be a buyer on gap fill. If they're below on open and, and we have gap fill, then I'm probably gonna be a seller, and that. That would actually be a little bit more interesting, uh, but as you can see, we are still we're we're still holding on to the green fifty five exponential right here. Whoops, taking everything off uh, on the daily. Now, yes, we did print a bearish engulfing daily uh, yesterday, but hey, you know, again, I I, I put more weight on the uh, on the exponentials in this. Uh, we do see all of our oscillators basically doing the same thing as spot right now. You will be dealing with some some hidden bearish divergence if you know if we can actually confirm this as a lower high, but we haven't confirmed it as a lower high just yet. We need to take out the low of this guy at 38.60. So got a lot of work to do. And again, weekend times typically typically nothing going on weekend times. I mean, you might get hunts one way or the other, but that's you know that's typically just bullshit. Um, yeah, typically reverse back to the mean. Of course, it's not bullshit. You know, the liquidation still the liquidation engine still works, but also if you're getting liquidated from one of those hunts, that's just literally a hundred dollars. Vegas is a better option. Anyways, uh, let's go look at the other mark. Let's go look at the other um, the other uh, cones of this market. We got Mr. Buterol cone over here. Again, still you know doing the same thing as Bitcoin, looking a little bit more like an ascending triangle right here. Uh, testing the top side of the range, getting rejected from that. Like uh, late last night, it looks like came all the way back down. Tested the bottom side of the range. Again, this is you know pretty normal shit. Uh, what are, what are also just saying? Four hour Stokes going up. Uh, four hour RSI trending down. Four hour Jewel is four hour jewel is going to be signaling a sell uh pretty soon uh three hour jewel did signal a sell whoa uh yeah okay i, I put a lot of weight on this uh, the jewel is my best indicator the jewel is the one that i put the most weight on as far as like a single indicator and it's actually saying sell right now uh, technically speaking though, this is an ascending triangle. So until you actually break 148 and a quarter, uh, I wouldn't get too excited. But if you, if that does happen, I'd look down around here, right around to this, this horizontal at around 141. If it breaks to the upside, then I'd be looking towards, I think just the prior high of about 161. Yes. Somewhere right around here. looks, yeah, about 161. So good trade to be made either which way, but Hey, jewel is in a bearish posturing on the three hour that is confirmed. Four hour is not, but it, it's, it looks like it wants to do it. Uh, what about the five hour? 
Curious what the five hours says. Yeah, five hours in a bearish posture as well. Um, I, I, yeah, this actually makes me think that we break down. Actually, does make me think that we break down. Uh, what is uh, Mrs. Litecoin doing over here? Again, Mrs. Litecoin unable to open and close a, a daily dolo above this purple 200 exponential movement average. There's a lot of pressure on this one. I think that this one, this one looks like it wants to come down as well. You got your daily Stokes hinting at a cross to the downside. Not confirmed. 12-hour Stokes cross to the downside confirmed. Looks like it wants to come back down again to that $46 range. Now I've been speaking about this for for a little bit of time, but understand that the timing of these you know, the, the timing of these things has to be relative to the time frame that we look at. So when I look at a 12 hour and I say it's going to have, you know, I'm looking for that relatively soon, that could still be, you know, a couple of days. Um, do you have the 12 hour Dildo Golden Cross though, on the other hand, but again, event driven, news driven type thing. And overall, we are still in this rising channel, right? We're still in this rising channel. In fact, it could be a little bit more parallel if I had better drawing tools or if I just had better drawing acumen. But yeah, something like this, typically a bearishly resolved pattern and it does look like we wanna come down here. Yes, there is support at 48 and a half, but I, my, my opinion would be it looks like, it really looks like it wants to come down to $46. Uh, let's go look at Mr. Ripple's nipples getting all sultry in the cave right now. And same sort of thing, looks like he wants to come down. Looks like he wants to come down. Uh, Twelve-hour Stokes headed down. They didn't. They, they weren't actually allowed to get as high as the other ones. Same with the daily as well. Hinting at across the downside. Not confirmed though. Uh, support right here. Uh, thirty-one and a half or thirty-one point four uh, cents. So I, I really have a hard time being bearish uh, as long as you're above this area. But hey, it, it does look like it wants to come down. We do have some hidden bearish divergence. I want to see how how high of a time frame we go up to. Um. Yeah, right here, right here, but this is not confirmed. What about a two day? Is that confirmed? Two day is two days confirmed. Do we have it though? Uh, yeah, we do, but just barely. Uh, man, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that that counts too much. Uh, but yeah, you'd have support down around the low thirty one cent region. Um, let's see. Let's go look at Mister Zcash, Zcash and Bcash. Uh, looking kind of weird to me. I don't really have any. I don't. I don't have an opinion on this. It, I don't have an opinion on this. What what the fuck am I looking at? You're holding the 21 exponential on the daily, I mean, on the two day. I mean, I guess that's okay. Uh, daily looks like wants to come down. Probably wants to come back down to test uh, 51 and a half dollars. B cash probably wants to come back down and test uh, 132, 133. Tron cash looks like he wants to come back and uh, well, Tron's actually different right now. Tron's Tron's a little bit different right now. Um, as long as you're above the daily 21, I don't like being bearish. I really don't. Uh, so yeah, I, I'd, I'd be a little bit more undecided on that. Maybe, maybe pop back up and test a uh, three cent region before, before coming down further. Uh, Neo rejection right at the next re horizontal resistance. Bad wants to come down. EOS, EOS, uh, rejection at the 200 simple 200 exponential probably wants to come down as well. Uh, Ripple, we already looked at that. Okay, cool. So we got all the alts. Okay, I think we're good there. Um, let's do the daily rounds of the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. We are at a 63, so we ticked up a couple points from yesterday. So we've been maintained above that 60 level for the last three days or so. Maybe going below there for one uh, for, for one day. Yeah, one off right here. But overall, this area does tell me, just like the last spikes on this area, to be cognizant of the next big high it's likely coming sooner rather than later you have this this area right over here this is your double top in february at twelve thousand. this was your may high at ten thousand this was your july high at eight thousand this was your november high before literally you know six thousand breaking and then once again we're up around this level which again this shows some very this this shows the exuberant irrationality of this market, and again, another big thing alongside our other market uh, our other market underlying dynamics like like longs and shorts ratios, that very unlikely that that uh, that the bearish market is over. I mean, Bitcoin is not taking out a major resistance; it is not taking out anything on the macro, and people are getting more excited here than they than when they were at you know when when we were actually higher over here in January at forty two hundred. And more excited than over than even over here than when Bitcoin was at six thousand, and even more excited than when Bitcoin was over here at eight thousand. I mean, this is fucking crazy. The only times that we've been higher was when Bitcoin was was at ten thousand or knocking on the door of ten thousand and the double top at twelve thousand. So again, like very, 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 very concerning. Um, but overall, uh, bringing it back on over here to the lower time frames. 
um, as I do. Or actually, should we talk about uh, should we talk about traditional markets just really, really quick? Looks like we are grinding this resistance right here. I wouldn't necessarily be bearish just yet. I'm not bearish at like either any way on this thing, but I might be looking for a pullback within this range. We are kind of trading into this uh, into this order block right here, and we are starting to get some divergences on our lower time frames. Daily's really snaking around quite a bit, but uh, but hey. I, you know, I'd still be looking for that area to probably be hit before before a, de a decent pullback. Um, but yeah, going back on over here to Mr. Bitcoin as we wrap up the lower time frames. Overall, yes, it is an ascending triangle. Yes, that is a more bullish consolidation pattern. But I would still be looking at this to say, hey, 39.50. As long as you're below there, as long as you're closing, let's say two two hour deltas below there, don't want to be down, too damn bullish. And if it does close above there, I'm looking towards 40.50 to 41.00 ish area. If we break to the downside below 3900 then i'm looking for a move down to the low 3800 range probably gets picked up there probably bounces from there really i'm waiting for an actual trade to be put on when the cme futures open on sunday at 6 p.m eastern time that's what i'm waiting for anything that happens in between is just you know it's just that uh until then probably going to be a game of support and resistance as we f as we float our way along this uh uh, along these trend lines. So that's what I'd be saying right now. Again, that's going to do it for this morning. Hope you, that you're having a beautiful um, Saturday morning. I'm going to be going out to the electronics store a little bit later. So if you are electronically minded, please feel free to, pla to pass me any suggestions that you think would um, uh, benefit this stream. I'm always looking for new upgrades. So as always, uh, please don't don't be a stranger. I want to be a very relatable person. I want to be you know within touch. So, uh, so yeah, hit me up on Discord, uh, preferably, as that's the easiest way to go. As Windows has asked me if I want update no windows come on we got some we got some magic in it money uh to trade right now anyways guys that's going to do it for this morning again want to be wishing you well on this lovely saturday want to be wishing you well as always and say take care and see you soon